You're watching 3Q. I'm Sarah McDonald. Well, there was jubilation in parks and arenas in every state recently, despite the fact that there wasn't a ball or a football player to be seen. The cheers were for the Prime Minister at the Every Australian Counts rallies as she committed to the National Disability Insurance Scheme. So today on 3Q we ask, how will the NDIS work? John Delaboska is the campaign director of the Every Australian Counts campaign for the NDIS and he joins us. John, let's just bask in that moment for, for just a, a second and watch what happened at the rallies with the Prime Minister. I've come today to join you for one purpose. Today I can announce that in the May budget, my government, your Labor government, will fund our share for the launch of the National Disability Insurance Scheme. We will do our part. Well, it was quite a moment. Does that mean the NDIS is done and dusted? Well, there's still a fair bit of work to do. Um, the NDIS has attracted the support now of the, the government leadership, the Prime Minister and Jenny Macklin and her, their colleagues, and also um, most of the leadership, including the most important person uh, in the coalition, Tony Abbott. Uh, also, we've got the support of the Greens and most of the independents. In fact, I think pretty well all of the independents and most of the leadership of the state governments, coalition and Labor. So we're doing pretty well in so far as the, the political leadership of the nation is concerned. But we really need, I think, to keep convincing Australians at large that this is a real problem, that it's something Australians share and something all Australians have to do something about. So given that, where does the campaign go from here for you? Well, I think we need to be um, continue to advocate amongst the public. We need to be making sure the public's aware that this is not uh, this is not just some passing issue. This has been a serious source of, I think, political embarrassment, political shame, if you thought about it, for uh, for Australia over a very long period of time. We, uh, as a very proud, wealthy nation that pride ourselves on giving people a fair go, have been a long way behind when it comes to the fair treatment of disabled Australians. And uh, this is an opportunity in fairly short order, it's going to take a few years to build this scheme, but in fairly short order to bridge that gap and do better. So what's the first stage? We're going to have four sites next year where, where a NDIS will be established. Do you know where they'll be and how that'll work? As th at this stage, no one really knows where they'll be. They're obviously um, an anticipated negotiation between the Prime Minister and uh, the Minister and, uh, and the various Premiers around where trial sites, or uh, to give them the correct name, launch sites will be, and that's an important distinction because launch means that the scheme is actually going to happen and um, that the launch sites are there to find out how to best deliver the scheme and to, if you like, get the, the bugs out of the system uh, to make sure it works well. Uh, but uh, those launch sites, we believe there'll be four, but there could be three. The Prime Minister obviously said there will be a number of launch sites. Um, originally, the Productivity Commission seemed to indicate only one. That doesn't matter to us. What's important is that they're on the board and on, and on, the, on the go this year. Michael, uh, let's go to the, uh, the panel here. Michael, what are you, uh, what's your response to the NDIS? And a lot of your members would be affected and services are very patchy depending on where you live and, and different funding every year. Well, my first response is if someone said to me 18 months ago that we would have both the government and the opposition locked into implementing this policy, I would have said no way. I, I think it's an amazing um, you know, progression. Um, and I agree with uh, John, what we need to do now is make sure that now we've got bipartisan support and independents and Greens all supporting it, we've really got to mobilise, we've got to cement it with community support. Our union, I know the whole trade union movement has been very active in, on this issue and we've got to make sure our members, you know, say to all the leaders in the community, politicians, all their elected representatives, what you've done by committing to this is good, we support you, big tick for you. As I say to our members, we're pretty good at uh, going after politicians when they do the wrong thing. We've just got to be as good when they do the right thing. They've done the right thing here, and we should tell them they've done the right thing. Well, it's nice to have good news to talk about, I it suppose. Is. Tim, what do you think? Because the cost is about the same as increasing the aid budget to the extent you'd like. Oh, I think this is absolutely something that Australia has to do. I think it's looked like an amazing rally to be at, and great to see the, the um, Prime Minister in charge of such a, 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 a positive development and you know, setting the news agenda. I think the RP can do, probably do, do more of those sorts of things. And again, it's an amazing achievement to have taken it from a standing start to this point. And I guess that speaks to the power of a lot of the disability advocates and people that live with people who have a disability obviously have a, a real stake in the game. But I wonder how that is going to be balanced out, John, in terms of how you choose those sites in the next couple of months. Will there be a lot of, uh, you know, will there be a lot of tension around those specific issues, do you think? Look, I don't think there'll be much tension in the disability community. Um, I think there'll be the usual states, states arguments mm. and uh, 
uh, that'll, that'll obviously, that's one of the things that I think the Prime Minister uh, has overcome by announcing that there might be three or four sides, mm -hmm. because at least she has uh, three or four different people right, that she right. can make happy, um, rather than just one, where that would mean that everybody else might be a bit discontented. But look, I think there's also an important principle here, and Jenny Macklin has made it clear that because there'll be four, there'll be some different learnings that can be made about how to make this scheme most effectively work. And also, each of the states has a different starting point, um, for want of a better way of thinking of it. Um, it's probably a fair point to say that Victoria and New South Wales have much better disability service systems than the other states at the moment. In the past, other states have done better. Um, Western Australia does fairly well and other states don't do so well. So um, it, you know, it's going to be difficult to negotiate this fairly, but I'm sure they'll be able to do it because they're quite committed to it. The states are quite nervous though, aren't they, in terms of, of the cost? How, how will the costs be shared? Well, the way the Productivity Commission uh, original report um, uh, was put together, it basically means that the existing workload of the states in disability services will eventually be put over into the pool of funds available for the National Disability Insurance Scheme. Um, so that means and that tells you that there's a fair bit of um, negotiation to be done at a COAG level or a ministerial council level to achieve the outcomes in each state um, to get a launch site going. But I have to say that there is a very strong enthusiasm by both the O'Farrell government and the Bayou government for a launch site in their states. I suspect there's also a strong enthusiasm uh, in South Australia and, uh, and, uh, and obviously that's going to be something that will be sorted through. Um, but the most important thing um, is that um, uh, once there's a national responsibility for this, the old problem of long waiting lists, long queues, and, uh, and frankly, um, the worst possible outcomes in terms of early intervention, people waiting very long periods of time for their aids, therapy and equipment, will become, in five or six years, a thing of the past. What about the, the future? As you said, it's going federal, and Tony Abbott, you mentioned this week, came out in support of it. Uh, he became Dr Yes for a moment, but we've had a little bit of Joe Hockey talking about the costs to individual Australians. So, are you nervous about a possible future coalition government? Well, I, look, I've, um, I suppose I could say I've, been, um, I've had a, a, a long career of um, having a few arguments with Tony Abbott. Um, on a very positive side, I'd say he's a person, once he makes up his mind, um, he's pretty committed and demonstrates a fair bit of capacity for commitment. That's not always, not always been a good thing in my view because he's made up his mind about some things I wouldn't necessarily agree with, but on this I do very strongly agree with it. So I think he's got the capacity to impose his will on those that are dissenting within the coalition and there's not many. Most of the people in the coalition to me seem to be supporting it. On Joe Hockey, um, I only rely on rumours, um, but um, look, I think people have to understand if they're looking at it, even from a, a, a tough economic perspective, this thing makes absolute fiscal sense because disability will just continue to cost the community more and more money. You'll get worse individual outcomes for uh, people with a disability. And in the end, putting in place an NDI, a National Disability Insurance Scheme, um, will be less costly than, than doing nothing. If you do nothing, it'll actually cost you more in the health budget, the forensic mental health budget, the corrective services budget, and everywhere else by the year 2018. Not my analysis, PricewaterhouseCoopers analysis. But in terms of how people will feel that cost, do you have any idea how it'll work? How the scheme will be paid for? Well, the Productivity Commission uh, suggested that this would be paid for by, um, because it takes a long time to build the scheme, by uh, containing outlays in other portfolio areas. Now, obviously governments deal with budgets from one year to the next when things go up and down and political priorities change. Um, I've said consistently and the campaign has said consistently that, that the judgments about revenue and re decisions about revenue are for the government and uh, the government needs to decide they're doing it and then obviously we need to persuade the community that it's worth doing and exactly how it's paid for is something the government will determine. And, and one of the architects of the Productivity Commission report, John Walsh, has said it, we have to go carefully that we don't rush this. It has to be done properly. Is there any danger of going a year earlier and, and going a bit faster or is it all good? A, a year earlier is all, all good. I think I wouldn't want to go much faster than that. <laughs> I don't think we're in danger there though, are we? No, I don't think so. <laughs> All right, well if people have insights and comments they'd like to be, uh, make on this, we'd love to have them on the Essential Vision website or via the 3Q hashtag on Twitter. That's it for this week on 3Q. Thanks so much to my guests, the CFMEU's National Secretary Michael O'Connor, UNICEF's Tim O'Connor and John Delabosca, the Campaign Director from Every Australian Counts. Hope you can join me next time on 3Q.